guys ready to do this? Yeah, just give me a second. I had a folder with everything in it, but I don't know where it's gone. Oh, that's not good. Yeah. Dave, you have anything? I have a few things, but I've got to run the bathroom. What's okay, up? Okay, everyone, yeah. left. I need information of anything. Please, I have more. Right and hold. A little longer. A little longer. And relax. Anyone seen the yoga mat? Yeah. We good to go? Uh, uh, no, we have no material whatsoever. They don't have any. I've got mine. What do you mean we have no material? Didn't anyone get anything prepared? Hey, Ben, got any figures? We need material. It's not like yeah, right. I can't do this one. Well, well, I'm in the way. Don't look at this one. I hate you guys. Sell for a Jaffa cake? Shut up, Tara. Welcome to the Abadi Show podcast. Hey, Callum. Hello, Ben. Hello, Dara. Hello, Dave. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Dave. Hello, Dave. <laughs> Hello, Dave. <laughs> I didn't know we were starting instantly. I had to move around and get stuff prepared. <laughs> what have you been for the last two hours? <laughs> I my, my seating position and whatnot. You sit in the same spot for your entire life. <laughs> the <laughs> intro was a it. joke. We're not actually supposed to be disorganized. <laughs> <laughs> no, you... you I told you I had to move rooms, remember? Because of the fire. <laughs> your parents are spanking each other in the other one. Uh, I don't even have any Jaffa cakes. <laughs> Alright, come on! I swear to God. Okay. To God. Shh, okay, can I... Shh. Okay, right. um, right, this is the Abadi Show podcast, as I'm fairly sure you know because of the extremely eccentric and long-winded intro. <laughs> um, but, basically, uh, yeah, this is what the intro, and I just reiterated, is... Um, the financial fucking podcast and the topics generally will be quite relaxed technology and gaming news development info. We're not experts in this area. Um, all of our information will be sourced from other sites that we will quote in our infos and etc. So like, it's not it's not all original. Some of it is our whatever opinions. Um, our opinions are obviously completely original, but viewer involvement is one thing we really want to emphasize here. Um, we want you guys to get involved, we really do, even though there's a small, there's only a small amount of you. Um, you can suggest topics each week or each time we upload, will there be a different topic to the, to the show within the tech and gaming quota. Um, we also want you to suggest any questions as well as topics, and we could maybe form a kind of Q&A session thing that could result... Uh, revolve around tech and gaming, or it could even revolve around us if you want to know some stuff about us, want to know more about the people you're listening to, that's okay as well. Um, but I, I don't think you'd be that interested in that, because we're all quite boring, particularly Ben. Um, I uh, spelled argument wrong in the talk. Yeah, I just edited it, because he's a spasm. Mm. It's American, it's American on a correct. Mm-hmm. Ah, good. Yeah. I'm fairly sure it's about the same in yeah. Okay. Actually. What? But My autocorrect says that's right. Uh-huh. Your yeah, autocorrect's yeah. wrong now, isn't it? Oh, my autocorrect says it's wrong. Oh, yeah, okay, okay, moving on, moving on, moving on, moving on. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, um, this week's theme will be improvements and changes in the gaming industry in relation to technology. So that's things like uh, PlayStation 4, console adaptation, virtual reality, history of consoles, Various oh, okay. da, how loud do you breathe in Darryl, your microphone? You need, stop it. you need to stop it, okay? Sorry. It's getting to half an hour. I'm excited. It, like, so you it builds. Like, it builds. It's kind of. are under pressure. Yeah. It, <laughs> Isn't it a submarine? It's quiet. <laughs> it's quiet for ages, and then it gets louder and louder until it's unhearable. <laughs> anything else? Well, it's unhearable. Be, once we've gone through all of our kind of. I guess you could call them prompts, things we've kind of scripted a little bit. We can ha we'll can have news that, e that the four of us have gathered individually over the week or over the months that we've been researching for the video. Things like interesting news articles that we found. <laughs> Shut up, Dara! Uh, like one day. <laughs> and... <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, Dara, you want to talk about aims and goals yeah. of the podcast, which are essentially the same thing. 
Yeah. Go ahead. The aims and the goals of this podcast um, are, I guess, uh, mild entertainment for people who are bored or <laughs> idle. I love, sorry to you, but I love how you're setting everyone's expectations low. <laughs> <laughs> mild. Well, the very well. best will only receive mild entertainment. <laughs> it's not a very strong adjective, is it? Mild. <laughs> Mediocre. Let's not Mid- lie to these people. Entertainment. Average entertainment levels. <laughs> Let's not lie to these people. Right? <laughs> enough. Um, enough. And yeah, uh, hopefully we'll come to some interesting conclusions because, of course, we are all privately educated, so that's all fine. <laughs> and um, it is basically just a way for us to vent our frustration <laughs> and my I'm hatred. Being privately educated. <laughs> being <us>. privately ed- <laughs> yeah. So anyone out there, you lucky poor bastards. Oh God! Don't try it for God's sake. <laughs> Don't say things like that to people. <laughs> da, 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 you literally killed Barrett. <laughs> <laughs> the Barrett's a scum of the earth. <laughs> How many people have we just insulted there? Oh, like they, like they have computers in my estate. Anyway. <laughs> You are like, what are you talking to us on? <laughs> Telekinesis. How are we communicating with them? Um, Right. Yeah. Oh. What if they did have computers? They do have computers. They're not be watching <laughs> they stole us. my computer. <laughs> I'm in someone's house right now. I'm about to go to the, the thief's house. I'm snuck into the thief's house to record this. I hope he doesn't come home. <laughs> Why don't you just take the computer and run? Because he has a comfy chair. <laughs> I'll take the chair as well. That's not a reason to stay. <laughs> Oh, are you you're planning on leaving the computer with him? You wouldn't want to steal it back. You just want to record and then leave it again. We were worried that we wouldn't be able to stay on track for 40 minutes. Half an hour, 40 minutes. We have managed to stay on track for less than two minutes. Oh, yeah. for God's sake. Okay, right, let's get on to... So, th- yeah, this week's theme again. Improvements and changes in the gaming industry. Mainly in relation to kind of uh, technology rather than actual gameplay. Yeah, that should also be... Um, not necessarily everything we're talking about is improved. Some of it is quite shit. Yeah. So things like um, <coughs> Xbox One <coughs> and things like that. So pretty, we, pretty, pretty we, strong we, statement there with that cough calm. Well, I mean, yeah, I think that's something that we should talk about definitely. Um, the so yeah, subtle, well, it's really subtle. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I, uh, yes, just you know, a just that foreshadowing one, there for you. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> so we want to. Uh, people have been comparing on. the PlayStation One, the PlayStation One, the Xbox One, the PlayStation Four, <laughs> and the Wii U. That's weird. I didn't expect the Wii U to come into a comparison. I'm, against... I'm quite a fan. Oh, there's a market. Wii. There's a market for it, though, isn't there? Like, I yeah. mean, it, 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 in fact, some could say almost a larger market because it it, it can appeal to uh such a such a broad spectrum of of uh, people like all kinds of people they don't necessarily yeah. have to be gamers i don't know why it is so hard for people to understand how to use a controller no. i don't really know is, why that's a big hold back thing is i don't actually think that the wii u is in competition with the xbox one and playstation as much because you can own a playstation and a wii it's unlikely that you'll own a playstation and an xbox yeah what, yeah what, what's funny i think about that is the fact that it's like the the, the the PS the like the P, the PlayStation kind of franchise spawned from Nintendo because your man Yama Yamaguchi I can't remember his name uh, was hired by Nintendo to develop one of their new systems but he went kind of off the rails with the system like making it better and better and he like imposed on them so they kicked him out and he made the PlayStation but now mm-hmm. like. I think like it's a much it's a much bigger kind of console. Although I suppose they're both kind of very different. So, so yeah, yeah. I, lo- I love how the PC doesn't come on to any of the comparison tables between these three consoles because I know it's not a console, but like the problem is that all these consoles are standardized. Like you can compare them. You can't compare a PC because it's because, quite a yeah, it's, broad it's term. It's insinuated by the fact that it's not on the comparison table. It insinuates that it is a league ahead, or at least it is. But a it could be different. It could know. also be a league behind. It depends on the yeah, PC. It's a different league. But yeah. uh, just looking at the price, you can tell. Like I mean, PlayStation Four is close to four hundred dollars. Xbox One is a whole hundred dollar increase from that. 
Wii U yep. is about fifty dollars less than the PlayStation Four at around three hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah. So I mean, you're obviously getting you're getting a lot less actually for quite a small decrease in price with the Wii U. With like, the Wii U, does anyone know you need a Wii and a Wii U, right? I yes, know. I think so. It's like a really? separate part of the. It's console. kind of like a Nintendo, isn't it's, it? That you like connect up. It's like a PS yep. Vita kind of. Yeah. Because that has a whole new integration with the PS4 now. Because you can play. You can. You know, you can remote. You, this whole thing of remote play. Like, yeah, I you can, can like, play my. P- carry on your saves like on the bus. Yeah, yeah, I can play my PS4 on the bus, but like it's just transmitting what would be on like my television to my thing with the power of a PS4 kind of. Yeah. The distance, yeah. The, di- the difference in RAM scares me a lot. The PlayStation and Xbox One are, well, I think they're they're quite um, they're close together on RAM, aren't they? They both have like about eight gigs, don't they? I, the... I know the PS or I know the PS has more RAM than the uh, uh, yeah no the P the, the X the oh no hang on. Uh, no, actually, yeah, they both have eight, eight games. Did you know but, that both Xbox and PlayStation actually have Windows 8 apps as well to play on tablets? That is quite impressive. Interesting. I was unaware if you of like that. Windows 8. iOS yeah, well, and Android. Yeah, but, I don't know. I think I think the, the thing that struck me the most about this whole launch, like, about this whole thing, has been, like, I don't know if you guys remember back to, like, 2007, when when the PS3 was coming out. But it was like, I know I said this to you before, but like, it, whatever game was coming out, it was like, holy sh- like, it, do- it, it does not matter what the game is. It was like, Little Big Planet, actually no, Little Big Planet is still a good game. But like, yeah, I don't know, those, those kind of games that were coming out for like, Resistance Fall of Man, it was like, it didn't matter, because it was not on my PS2. It wasn't like, Mafia 2, with that crappy graphics. Yeah. Um, it was like, oh my god. But like this whole new thing with that IGN are giving like the console reviews and it's like 8.0, great for the PS4. And it's like all, all the games are like, I don't really want any of these launch titles. I I, I can't actually really see myself. I prefer to bu- play like GTA 5 than even something like Killzone Shadowfall. I think. I don't I don't really understand how. It seems like quite independent. How do you review a console yeah. without taking into account the games that are available for it? Is that well, yeah. The PS4 well, game I, think, is getting... I think it's functionality, user interface, and general kind of polish and prestige. But like, it's it, a bit it, odd. It, it shouldn't happen. Like, because it, 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 the problem is, it was such a big step going from the PS2, where it was just like it felt more like a DVD player that just was able to like play games. Like you pl- you put in your disc, and it was like on, and then it was like all right, fine. Then the PS3 came along, and you had this whole menu thing. You could access the internet. You had all these other features going. Mm, and yeah. then it was like the PS4, it just feels like the same. Although now we have all this stupid, like, Facebook integration, the share button. That's not what gaming should be. Yeah, about. no, it's gaming really not. Gaming is for sad, lonely nerds. It's not for, like, people hey, who lonely, constantly lonely play Facebook. I don't know. Oh, it's because that when, when gaming originally started, it was that stereotypical alone in your basement listening to fucking LPs and wanking into a cloth kind of thing. But now now gaming is cool because it's been popularized. Yeah, yeah. I, I couldn't think of like an LP back from the eighties, which is really, really retarded. Um but Yeah, well uh, but now it's being popularized and everyone is a gamer. Casually yeah. or yeah. like and with the release of games like FIFA and things that attract the jocks, so to speak, you have this weird Mel, like kind of bond, and everyone wants to do it, and it's. I think there's kind of it's almost like there's be there's um subcategories within gamers now. There never used yeah, to be. Yeah, it used to be strange. gamers were a set kind of person. Yeah, you kind of have the, the big ones. You have casual and I guess you kind of hardcore gamers. Like I guess we would be considered within mm. that group. I but, I, but even I think there's there's definitely a group above that. Who, I mean, you have people who do gaming for profit. Dara again with the breathing. Dara, you need to you need to mute yourself or something because it's awful. Alright. It gets louder and louder. So it's fine yeah. at some point, and then you do something that gets worse and worse. You're making all these tapping noises as well. Like these t- <laughs> tapping t- what are our opinions on these consoles? What, I, what do we think? I think I, the Xbox has been given a tough time. Yeah, I, I think, think so too, but like it, it, 
it's kind of its own fault. I mean, it's it's done. It's it's done. It's had a bad year in terms. But of the thing is, the main thing that knocked Xbox down was when it was released that it was spying on users. In it, but in the same contract, PS4 was signed up to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Microsoft do a really bad job of avoiding negative press. They always yeah. seem to kind of be. It got discovered uh, through yeah. Xbox, but if you looked lower down, like PS4 was in it. And loads of other companies as well, like yeah. Google and. Uh, this, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but there's this funny picture on IGN. It's it's not re- it's not meant to be funny, but it's this PS4 v Xbox One comparison, and the the way it's shot, it's just a picture of both consoles, and the PlayStation 4 looks like it's kind of shunting the Xbox <laughs> out of shot. Which one got this link open? It's Which one? Like, oh it, yeah, it's the first one. It's kind of like taking over the screen. Oh, and it's kind of being knocked off. In case we hadn't mentioned, all the links to everything we're talking about will be in the description. If you need yeah, to know yeah. about it, most of them are on it. IGN, but like we're not we're not taking stuff from it. We're just using it as kind of a, a reference point. But, um, well, yeah, I don't know what I think. I think, to be honest, that I'm I'm not gonna rush to buy either of these consoles, and I'm gonna stick with PC because I find it so I just, much yeah. more compatible. I, 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 it's mo- there's a lot more freedom within the PC, like category. I think it needs to be divided though. There needs to be some sort of measurement level so to have like low PCs, medium PCs and powerful PCs because just saying that PC is better isn't fair. No, yeah. Well, there, there is certainly a price range that is definitely over anything you could do in terms of modifications to any console. Like You can put tens and th- of thousands of euro or dollars or whatever you use into a PC and make it unbelievable. Yeah. But it's whether you can get one if you should be comparing it to a four hundred dollar PC, is yeah, what it well, should the thing be. Is, is that PC? I don't been around for longer. I don't think you can really compare them. If I'm honest, they're completely different. They're very yeah. hard to compare. Consoles I... are trying to achieve a completely different thing to what PC is doing. That the problem with PC is that although you have more control, there is way, way, way more room for error. And it's so much harder because there's so many software and hardware developers, like literally hundreds of companies, and you only have like what two main, three main console developers. Yeah, it's so hard. If you get like a malware or no malware, a malfunction in your PC, you're pretty much left independently to fix it yourself. But with a console, you can send it back. Or and modding is such a bitch if you don't know what to do. We don't even have to get involved in modding though. It's just that the option is there. For me, yeah, that's it's like. a better route to take, in my opinion. I people can disagree, but I think PC is significantly better. If I, I don't, to, what were you saying there? Go ahead. No, I, I don't know. Like I, I just feel like there's always going to be a place for P, like there's something about PC or like console games or and console gaming that like it's kind of like it, it's like an inbuilt thing in me because like it's kind of what I grew up with and it's mm. like. It's like, I just, I like the hype that usually surrounded it, and like, just that feeling of like, togetherness, that's like, pushing through, and it's like, we're all on the same page, and, you know, it, 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 yeah. PC feels less about, the, it, 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 for me, it embodies less of the, the spirit of what I know is gaming. See, I was brought, like, like, my whole childhood was on console as well, I yeah. was a console gamer right up until second year. Very of school, so that's what, like, 14, 15 years old? Yeah. The thing is with PC is that you need, physically, on a physical level, you need to put more effort into playing things. With the console, you can kind of sit back, you can have friends over, you can... You can I like, disagree It's way more that. relaxed than PC. I disagree. Yeah. If it's to do, because I, like, you can do anything you can on an Xbox on a PC. You can get an Xbox controller and hook it up to your PC and play it like an Xbox. You can, yeah. But, but then yeah, also you, you have the added bonuses of the PC. Yeah, but it's all like this thing where you're like, yeah, you can. You can. And it's one of those things where it's bad because there's no real defense that a console can have. But it's just like... You go to the shop, you buy the console, you have the console, and you play it. Yeah, I know it's easier, and I don't really like saying that, like, oh, it's better because it's easier. But it's just, like, with PC, it, you feel like... I just I just think there's something more lonely about a PC. I think I just always feel like there's something more... Lone, like, with a console, it's just... It, I, I feel more comforted when I'm playing it. But when I'm playing a PC, I just feel kind of alone. I feel like I'm... I'm 
the one struggling with the thing and the problem and I think I that's mainly because you haven't played it as much. I think yeah, I if you got, I think that's kind of like it's, a it's hill, and if, once you get over that hill, it's much much better. What you're trying to do is you're trying to transpose your console um, experience onto PC by avoiding a lot of the really popular multiplayer PC games. It seems like like Minecraft and Terraria or whatever, but things like that that really are at the heart the true PC experience that you do. But what I understand in your point is that you you're. You sounded before very, very much opposed to the whole uniting console gamers through Facebook and Twitter and whatever social media accessories there are to them. I don't yeah. think social media is really to do with argument against PC. It's more, that's very different in my opinion. That's across everything now. If it was like, say it was combining a single voice, like combining everything so you could play the games from any console with anyone on any other console. So I could be sitting on my PC playing with someone else sitting at a PlayStation. Yeah. I think that's the way it should go. Mm, yeah, uh, that's difficult. That is very difficult, but I think that's the way it should really be. In an ideal world. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. It's, it's an interesting debate, but like... It, it, and yeah, no, like I wouldn't say that it's like... I, I think it's kind of... When I was talking about loneliness, it's like it kind of in a different way. It's not like... like they're, they're, I, I, fi I find, like, PC, yeah, I, I almost feel like it's more social, because, like, it, it, there's nothing worse than being online on a PC, or on a, uh, a console, uh, like, playing something like Call of Duty, and it's just, like, horrible, squealing children. Yeah. You get that on PC. You get Not that. as much. You, you do get that on PC, but... To a lower extent. But, but with, if you play games like COD and stuff on PC, you get the same thing. Well, no, you get the exact same thing, but with PC, you're open to games like, like, Minecraft. And I know I'm not mad on it, like, I'm not, I'm, I wouldn't consider myself an avid Minecraft fan, but I appreciate what it does, which is kind of, it allows sort of children and, uh, you know, I suppose people, but like, I'm mainly directing this at children, to kind of, it allows them to access their own creativity. Yeah. I think, I think my beef with it is, kind of that like i've never felt like i was playing a game when i played it and that i think comes See, from my console like based roots i feel very, like I've i just i, I, feel, I feel, feel like, like, like you're linear. really you're really linear in your games you like your games to have a start middle and end whereas kind of, yeah i think with, with my video games i like a start middle and end but when i'm playing minecraft it almost feels like a, a huge vast like um virtual lego set i feel like i've been given the, it would like, have been very very different if you had started playing minecraft at the same time as as all of us if we all started at the same knowledge yeah. level and built up together it would be very different you coming in when we all know what we're doing makes it difficult for you to understand and catch up one thing that i find remarkable about this whole thing is if you take, if you look at the the time in, in which gaming has existed, it's not very long. It yeah. really, really isn't. It's it's terrifyingly short, almost how far gaming has come along. Like yeah, oh, very, is. very scary. And the the advancement rate in terms of technology and processing power of gaming is, I think, is faster than any industry in the world. Oh, definitely. Um, but and so, it's, I mean, that it's just getting faster science. and faster as well. And yeah, yeah, it, it increases by an exponen exponential rate every like eighteen months or something. Um, but like, imagine in in fifty years when we're still alive, if we still if we maintain our gaming aptitude at that point, who knows? It will be unbelievable. It'll be yeah. amazing. Yeah. And th like, that's one positive thing that has come out of the fact that gaming has been popularized and is now part of everyone's lives, not just the the nerdy yeah. basement geek. Yeah. Well, I, that, I, yeah. Yeah. I I think we're coming to a kind of interesting uh, time in gaming kind of history now because yeah, as I, like as you were saying, like we're we're coming to the to the to to like technologically. Uh, quite a quite a dramatic, uh, you know, speeding up or whatever. But it's interesting to kind of see how we're going in terms of 
what we're doing with the content and what we're doing with the kind of this of like like uh, you know like the HBO box sets of games like The Last of Us versus like the kind of mindless uh, shoot 'em up games uh, of like you know. Uh, Battlefield 4 like mm. what I really hated about the review that IGN gave for Battlefield 4 was like um, they, gave, they gave this review right and it was like uh, what was it like it was saying like uh, oh you know the, the the story in Battlefield 4 is pants and I was like you're not going to want to play this this is so bad it's like the worst thing I've ever heard they were playing Cliff and it sounded awful and it was just so cheesy and crap and I had like the worst story ever are you yeah, sure because this like, IGN review of Battlefield 4 gives it 8.5 this is what I'm saying. That this is what I'm saying. And then at the end of the the review, he was like, "The campaign serves as a footnote for what is otherwise an amazing multiplayer experience." And it's just like you don't get like it shouldn't just be about the multiplayer. Like I I think fair enough in a multiplayer game, but the problem is that games like Battlefield Four are forced to make both a multiplayer and a single player. I that, think that's like, what that's where Rockstar excelled for a very long time. I think games should single player. should really yeah. decide multiplayer or single player, or yeah. else yeah. the multiplayer is the exact same as single player. Like you join in on the single player. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. It should, no, look at the look, if you look at this review here. The you have this mediocre single player and mod slash map matches, which are the negatives to Battlefield 4, and th- these two extraordinarily important things, perhaps not the mismatches, but the m- single player, are weighed out and brought up to 8.5 by map design and dynamic environments. That doesn't yeah. seem like that would increase. Like, a single player seems way more important than either of those two things. To me, I, know, I think yeah. a game can be very good with a terrible single player. I don't think it should have the single player at all. If it's going for a very good multiplayer game, they shouldn't bother with the single player. They well, should be I mean, separate. Well, bad for people who don't have online. Yeah. The, well, then they don't get the game. That's not the point. It should be separate. But the, but then they're cutting. The, well, a gaming company would never do that because they're Make cutting two out games. a massive market. That's yeah. like that's very expensive. They have to advertise both games. They have to ship both games in equal quantities. I I, yeah. I, I, I agree with you personally, but I don't think it's logistically feasible. Maybe for a company. Um, virtual I... reality. Sorry to skip us on. Yeah. Um. That yeah, it, I as feel I was, as I was saying, we we're the in like the rate of growth. That's the next thing. We're at the perfect point. We are going to live through possibly the best part of gaming advancements. We're like right on the tip. It's just about to peak. Yeah, and right. we're all poor and can't afford them. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. perfect. Great, we get to <laughs> stare in the shop windows as richer people pay, play them. That great, oh, brilliant. I'm so well, no, in your neighbourhood, they'll just break down the windows. And take <laughs> yeah, <them. laughs> no, there'll be no windows of expensive equipment behind iron bars. Yeah. Yeah. Da- Derek, you can come to our neighbourhood, and we can all go down and look down at the windows <laughs> and break the windows and see them. But no, Derek, get out of our neighbourhood. <laughs> <laughs> you don't, don't bring your stuff to our neighbourhood. Um, I suppose we have to talk about Oculus Rift, although that that seems kind of beaten to death on the internet. I don't know if I really want to talk about that that much. Well, I, oh, I'm I don't so know. excited about it. I, I think it uh, well no the, the the one thing that I was saying to Ben though is that I don't like about it and it's like it's not a, it's not a general thing it's like a feature of it is well, like I don't like the way that you know the way you look around and your character looks around obviously yeah if you look around in a game where you're holding a gun unless you have the attachment of like a gun your gun will move with your eyes like which would really throw me off if I was playing a game I would find that really weird but hopefully. Like, I feel like if I was to have the true Oculus Rift experience, I'd need the Omni Treadmill, and I'd need, like, a, a gun if so, or, or, like, PlayStation Move controllers that would act as, like, a weapon. Uh, well, the other option the is, Rift. um, the, what me and Dara have actually tried before is a thing called Project Holodeck, which probably most of you won't have heard of, because it's quite a lot smaller than things like the Oculus Rift. They've actually combined with the Oculus Rift now, they're working together. And what it does is it's like a suit, not a square suit, a backpack, and then two controllers. It uses the PlayStation Move, and it's a big helmet with an Oculus Rift on the front, and basically the things in your hands act as your hands. 
There's little yeah. buttons and triggers on it that act as your hands. You can clench and things with these, and then move them around and swipe and stuff like that. Um, I feel cooking. like this is... If it's going to happen, I feel like this project is the one that's going to pull it all together. Well, the one big problem I had with... Well, no, the two big problems I had with this was, one, the fact that I was... That I that, <laughs> that the way it worked, because it was called a hollow deck, was... You actually did, you were walking around a hollow deck, so you constantly be like ushered back into the the hollow deck by like the frantic like uh, people who are testing it or whatever. That's why uh, I feel the um, of testing. The, the Omni would work Omni, really yeah. well with that. But my other big problem with it as well was, which isn't really a problem because they were still in beta stage. But the game that we were playing was called it was called Burning Skies or something. Oh, it was I, so I, awful. I, that it wasn't was like, really the point. It was like made on like Unity. Like, and it was just like, it was like, you couldn't tell what was going on. You were trying to fly a ship and you were like flying into, to like lampshades and it, it, it was kind of crappy. But I'm like, sorry, is Dave still here? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, my, other pro- happy. my other problem wa- with it was we played for about half an hour each maybe, Dara. And yeah. I had the most horrendous headache after that. Yeah, it Awful. was a bit weird. It was a bit weird. Was, also, yeah. you look ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you do. Of it now. He just looks like a complete idiot. Yeah. As an interview with with uh, with me, you and Ronan. Yeah, there is. Yeah, we <laughs> is are, that really? We got an interview. Yeah, it's on yeah. YouTube. It's hilarious. I oh, want to see God. that actually. Yeah, I'm so it? nervous in it. I'm just like it's like going into the Matrix. I'm fairly I'm sure like I don't talk in it. I'm fairly sure I'm like walking into a wall in the background. <laughs> yeah, I think you're just out of shot of the thing, and Ronan's just like, like overshot. Like he's please send that to me. He's so we tall. Will. I will actually. I'll try to find that. But yeah, uh, no, yeah. definitely check this project out and do everything you can to support it because I really feel like if this got together with the Omni treadmill, it would that would be it. I yeah, feel like if they all there. managed to combine in some way, I feel like. It, that's virtual reality to me. Yeah. Yeah. That, or, 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 what, what happened was, uh, your man, uh, what, what happened was like, uh, uh, on the gadget show. Remember, they did that amazing thing where they were like, they didn't actually have the, the Oculus at that stage, but it was like they set up like a 180 degree, uh, screen basically, and they had set up mounted turrets. Of paintball guns. Yeah, no, I remember I watched that video, uh, and then whenever uh, you got shot from a direction, the paintball would sh- hit you. And that was Battlefield Three, and that really annoyed me. That video because um, it it was another thing that hyped me up for that game, and it was so disappointing. That 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 really annoyed me that they used Battlefield Three because it those ads were so misleading. They, they're so misleading. It was like, is it real life or is it Battlefield 3? The differences are very clear. <laughs> There's a very clear division of what was Battlefield 3 in those adverts and what was real life. The stuff that looked like real life was real life and the stuff that looked like Battlefield 3 is Battlefield 3. Also, the campaign was incredibly, annoyingly, frustratingly hard. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that would be quite... Could you imagine if we ever got to a point where we were, we were su- suspended in a virtual reality? Where we, we found some way to sustain our uh, physical body, but we're in mentally captivated. See, in, that's uh, kind of that's another thought. Like, can we go too far with gaming? I think so. and overdo it. I to think the, it's, to the point that is almost unnecessary. Probably. I, yeah. I don't. I don't see what would stop someone from doing that, because that's what happens with with everything. Like that. There's unless we come across some severely kind of limiting factor with technology that literally stops us from progressing which in terms if we have like a, a certain amount of time is not likely to happen unless no. we have that then I don't know but even, that, even how far we've come in virtual reality to date like Dara are you talking about the console which is like the first virtual reality console <laughs> to ever try and I think we have to mention it because it's kind of hilarious there's a no it's it's not it's there was one there's a few before it but no basically it was there's a... Nintendo was waiting uh, they had to delay the launch of one of their consoles back in the mid 90s so to fill up the time so people wouldn't get pissed off they released this product called the virtual boy 
it's which was hilarious. like this this portable kind of Game Boy headset thing that had a it had a stand for no reason where when it definitely should have had straps so you'd put your face in it and it would just push it over <laughs> which, which was so stupid and it would give you severe headaches it had this sort of horrible haunting red look it, when you looked inside it like you were staring into some sort of demonic nightmare world and it was terrible it was an awful thing and let's <laughs> hope that uh, we've improved it with uh, the Oculus Rift I think so I think already I mean how long have you <laughs> been think... working on virtual reality properly well this was out in E3 in 1995 this virtual boy yeah like yeah, but it, it, like the thing that kind of has happened with virtual reality is like it's been very sporadic. It's kind of like it, it came out in like in like I think as early as like the nineteen eighties. There was there was kind of examples of weird, you know, those weird gloves and weird helmets that yeah, you occasionally yeah. see in those haunted museums of gaming. And like then, then, then again with the Virtual Boy in the mid '90s, but they all kind of failed, which is weird. It'd be interesting to see if the if for some reason maybe we can't handle, maybe we can't handle virtual reality and the Oculus Rift will fail. Even though it's so incredible, it'll somehow fail because we, it's like no, it's too far. We've gone too far. We'll step back a bit. In fact, actually, in terms of uh, the videos I've seen of people playing horror games on it. I think that is a step too far. People are going to start having heart attacks. Imagine playing uh, Outlast. I, me playing Outlast is scary enough. I feel like I, I've shat myself numerous <laughs> times. I feel like having a heart attack sometimes. I think I've had several heart attacks. Because of my cholesterol. I, I mean, imagine actually being trapped in that, that, that world, being strapped to your own face. It would be terrifying. It would be utterly terrifying. But anyway, definitely, it's 48 seconds long. There's a trailer in the description for the Virtual Boy. It's absolutely hilarious please check it out it's so funny i think well, it's, it's just it's it's mainly just how dramatically presented it is they like they managed to dramatize tennis well, so yeah. well well I, I i spent half an hour one time uh going back because some guy had made a playlist of all the console ads from like the mid 80s to the to, to now and what who the fuck do they get to make these things they're the most bizarre you know who directed the ps2 ads you know who yeah I david know yeah. david lynch directed the ps2 ads yeah. there's like crying ducks babies <laughs> with no arms yeah and so then weird. at the end of the advert it's just like ps2 oh, <laughs> it was such a strange idea to get him to direct like, it kind of worked because it's just got people talking about it that's all an ad needs to do is to get people talking about it I yeah. suppose, yeah, that's a good yes. point. But I don't think it needed to because it was an incredibly advanced piece of software. I would have bought it anyway. Just show me footage from but the game. But you're already a gamer at that point. You, they're trying to entice, 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 what entice people who aren't going to get it, who haven't already decided they're going to get it before it comes out. I suppose I, I can't imagine that enticing me to buy. No, game I don't think that would entice me to get. A, a baby with no arms would. It, who did they the market? I don't, well, I suppose that they were kind of marketing that at people who had a PS One. They marketed PS One kind of funnily at uh, people who took a lot of drugs because it was kind of the it was just uh, the end of the nineties or whatever, and it was like uh, because of kind of video games violent sort of thing. It was like the, it had been sort of tunneled and shunted into the 90s scene of people who were just really high and clubbers and just had t <laughs> taken ecstasy and then they go home and they just assume that this is their real life and they like play Wipeout or you know Greyman and that's kind of where PS1 kind of happened so it's, it's a really interesting history like I watched a, you should actually check it out uh, if you're a person and you're listening to this um, <laughs> Um, robots, you can't check this out. Uh, yeah, robots, you don't know, stay away. But um, on 4OD, there's a, a, a new Charlie Brooker documentary on video games, and it's like an hour and a half long. But it's so good. It, like, it, it really it goes right from like the 1970s onwards, and it's like, there's, there's really interesting, like, I, I was telling Ben about this, but Calm, you know there was a game, right, uh, in uh, 1984 called Elites, right? And it was, mm -hmm. it was a, uh, 
it was sort of conjured up by these two physicists from, I think it was Harvard, but I could be wrong. But basically, it worked under that kind of spore dynamic of uh, uh, environments randomly generating around you. Yeah. And it was it was kind of a very, it was a wire mesh kind of graphic game like Asteroids, but it was 3D. And you'd go hmm. around uh, exploring the cosmos. Wait, do you mean like, like 3D, like kind of like red, green 3D, or do you just mean... No, 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 just, no, just, 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 just a, a, yeah, 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 a okay, three-axis okay. uh, uh, plane. But uh, you go around, and you were basically like you were just a space privateer, basically, and you just, you just, you just go around, and you could, you could help wounded vessels, or you could destroy them, and you could take their loot. And there was a lot of emphasis on trading, and they had a kind of a, a system where that would work, and and it was really interesting, uh, I, I think, and it was like it really like twenty years like ahead of its time, like it was. It was really bad. Obviously, the graphics weren't, but like, it, it's the kind of stuff that you'd see in a modern day uh, kind of uh, role playing game, like um, like uh, Mass Effect or something. Yeah. Well, well, while we're on the topic of kind of, it seems like we're talking about the history a lot. Um, I found on BBC.com, or I don't know if it was BBC News or whatever, but it was like this kind of what will happen timeline but it's like the opposite of a timeline it's kind of like a, a prediction, prediction line yeah, predictions right um someone's like quality is awful it's like it's Darren again he's got too close to his mic yeah <laughs> i'll say it back a bit sorry I guess I... anyway they predicted so much here there's a lot of information but by 2015 so that's two years there will be well just tell me what you guys think of these things so that by 2015 there'll be an immor the, the first immortal rat. So through biological testing they would have created a rat that can live forever. I don't know if that includes kind of if it has a disease or something. It might just be in terms of the um, age age like destruction of cells but that's what they predict in two years time. I doubt that personally. Sorry um, I just got handed a big bowl of brownies. I love my house. They also think that Facebook oh, okay. will be completely overtaken in two years. I agree. Wait, which I think uh, is yeah. more potential than that. Did it say by what? Or is it speculating that another thing will overtake it? Or is it something we don't know? That no. doesn't oh, already oh, no, exist. No, 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 I imagine it'll be something we don't know. Uh, yeah. but it'll probably crop up in the next year or so. By 2016, they predict we, can, we will be able to touch each other through phone. And mm -hmm. like well, that. this is yeah. That's a new thing that I've been seeing a lot on like Vsauce on the mind blowns. It's like, and I've kind of been overlooking them because like adapting you know, you, senses into technology. Yeah, yeah you, know, you, you know, know when you hear something so insane and you're just like, I'll just disregard that. It's like knee biscuits and it's like you know dolls that can think before you can, but like you know fish can hear yeah. you think just before you sneeze. Um, <laughs> you think it just before you sees. But like it's that yes. kind of thing where it's like I'm just dis disregarding this information. It's this one I found weird. In twenty nineteen, they suspect that we will have um there'll be high resolution eyes for sale. I don't know, like in shops or That's weird. In clinics. That's like, oh there's a there's a film that does that. Um oh, Avengers. No, 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 where they like they he takes his eyes out. Because they're minority him. report. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, no, that didn't have anything to do with high resolution eyes. He had to change his eyes because I know, but it's still they were selling eyes in shops. In twenty seventeen, sorry, that's two years before that. Uh, computers will develop a sense of smell. They predict so that's kind of following on from people being able to touch each other through phone. Uh, twenty twenty humans um, will wear devices. Not interestingly enough, not have devices input them input in them, but will have devices that will record conversations with massive memory so they can relive those events. Like um, like, in, like a yeah. short history of, uh, of you, that, that, that uh, Jesse Armstrong, Charlie Booker, uh, yeah. Black Mirror episode. That was yeah. great, actually. That was really good. 2035, Chernobyl National Park is what I have there. Um, I don't know when? if that's... Ch Chernobyl will become a national park. Oh, <laughs> actually, actually, while, while you say that, there, there was a thing, there's, there's a incredibly, like, toxic... Uh, area, uh, it's in Russia uh, at the moment, like, it, it, it's similar to Chernobyl, it's like, it's, they've been dumping so much nuclear waste there that it's become, like, uh, that it's become so, so dangerous to your health that you can't be near there, and they've basically 
apparently they're having a big debate in the country at the moment because they want to create a sign. A sign? Uh, that, that, that my sister was telling me about. It's like a sign that will basically mean stay away or keep out, but they need it to sustain itself through the next thousand years, so they don't know what to say. Because obviously English even has changed <laughs> since 500 years. So they don't know what to say. But me and Meg were talking about it, and she couldn't remember the details of the article, so I was like, just no, do, I would stupid. just do like a big skull and crossbones. I feel like that's, that's what I pretty saying. universal like, for quite a long do time. A big skull and crossbones, or just a picture of a man and an arrow pointing the other way or something. You know, like, I, I feel like it shouldn't be this hard no. to like... And they're doing this weird thing where there's like they're doing like pictures of men and spikes coming at the men. <laughs> also, can, they, can they not adjust it over the years? Or is yeah, it that's what. I, oh, well, no, they're thinking. They're, what they're saying is, if some sort of horrible cataclysmic event happens and humans have to rebuild, the new humans might have to 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 like uh, understand this. Uh, but there are so many different things they've taken into consideration. Like if like so there's no way you can prepare for that. No. No. I, yeah, and like, surely whatever cla- ca- cataclysmic we'll event has sign. happened, will, well, may destroy the sign. But I'm sure that tiny pocket of radiation will be the least of your worries in this horrible. Yeah, if the whole world is flooded with lava, world. then I don't think a <laughs> yeah. little bit of radioactivity is going to be that bad. Yeah. That's why I, I I forgot to look up the uh, article, but it could be complete bullshit. My sister's basically insane. Well, yeah. in 2025, they predict that uh, we'll be able to upload our brains to computers. And um, people in fifty no, percent right. of people in the USA will be um, tracked by the government or by private organisations. Well, that's something that is that I, I mean I can't believe that pretty much. I mean, NSA. Base. NSA. Yeah. But, well, uh, yeah, that's basically happening already, isn't it? I'm surprised it was only fifty percent though. Um, I don't know what, what's stopping them from doing the other fifty. But in 2035, we'll be able to log online from our brain directly from our brain. And yeah. oh, this one was interesting. In twenty thirty, I know this is really out of time, but it, I had like um, divided it into utopia and dystopia, so I'm reading different times. But um, by twenty thirty, they predict that the moon will be claimed by China. That is interesting. Why China? Isn't it, isn't it already kind of claimed by NASA? No, te- no, no. Technically, n- no one owns it. Or oh, there's this this universal not universal this international law that says you can't claim. Yeah, but that, that was that was a thing. Wasn't it the, the Tom Cruise bought like uh, uh, an acre? Or I don't think two so. Acres there's an international of the policy that says that no incredibly doubt that. Yeah, exactly. I don't. But NASA don't own the moon. No one can. That's, that's, not what, we, that's what we're saying. Right. They okay. Don't. Um, anyway, moving on. I'll do the next few kind of quickly. They say that by 2050, at least one building will have an, a height of excess of, uh, sorry, a height in excess of 10 kilometers. By 2059, how tall be is 10 kilometers? Space. In terms of like, if you lay it flat down, 10 kilometers. That's like from where? <coughs> from well, I know, I know it's 10 kilometers, but in terms of, <laughs> <laughs> shut up. It's from like here to city center. No, well, no, because from. From my house to Sutton, as I'm sure all of our listeners will know, uh, is about eight miles. Uh, right. so there are well, currently people drawing right circles come. around Sutton with an eight mile radius trying to work yeah. out where your house sits. <laughs> <laughs> okay, by 2059, there'll be a Mars base. By 2062, there'll be the first cloned human. Haven't they? I think it'll be earlier. 2062. 2062, yeah. Haven't they already done it to, like, rats and sheep and stuff? They did it to sheep, but not properly. Dolly. Dolly, yeah, the kind of sheep. Dolly, they clone sheep. Um, 2100, there'll be an Ice Age beginning, which is crazy. I don't really know where they're getting the facts on, but from, even. Uh, and by 2150, at least one human will be over the age of 150, which I think is quite late. Yeah. I think we're soon. Well, the oldest person now is one... Two, two. I looked it up oh. a few minutes ago. Uh, I think it's one two. So I would say it's before then. Yeah, me too. It's about that. Hmm. All right. Well, then um, this has run over time a bit, so we're gonna skip. But normally there'll be a section here where we discuss games. 
because it's a gaming podcast and we want to do it, but because it's episode one, we've run over a little bit on this, so we're going to skip this briefly and go on to our recommendations for this episode of the podcast. Yeah, your mic, your mic. On what you guys should buy uh, if you're looking for a new game. So my recommendation is going to go to Don't Starve. It's currently on sale on Steam for about four ninety nine. It's really, really good. I've played it for like 20 hours in the last two days. It's really, really good fun. You should definitely go and play it. Anyone else? That's a lot of time for two days. Shh, quiet time. Anyone else? I would I would recommend Terraria because it's the same price and for the same reasons. All right. Well, I, I've played it for 170 hours. Not in two days, though. I, yeah. I mean... Well, I, I mean, that would be quite re- impressive if you've played for 170 hours in two days. <laughs> I, I suppose, if anything, I'd, I'd recommend Grand Theft Auto V if you all didn't already own it. Which, yeah. like, basically everyone does anyway, so... That's my recommendation for the day. Dave, yeah, the everyone, everyone knows that's good, though. So. Yeah, that's, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Shut up. Well, don't actually Dave, go on. Need, go on. Okay, Dave, Dave. I know. Um, uh, Dave, one Dave, final Dave. thing, which we're going to mention, is Game of the Year Award is coming up. What are your guys' opinions on what's going to win the Game of the Year Award? Okay, well... I For me, I would say, like... I've kind of been going over it in my head, and I don't know whether uh, Last of Us or, you know, uh, Grand Theft Auto V would actually win. You know what would be hilarious? If it was neither. (laughs) To surprise everyone. It's like like, like Call of Duty Ghosts. (laughs) Of course it's going to be Ghosts. Um, (laughs) All fanboys. No, no, no. I I don't know. I I, I think... I think the problem with it is, or, or how I kind of break down and how I kind of end up at thinking that it's GTA Five is like, I think The Last of Us is a better story told through the medium of a game, but as a game, I feel like Grand Theft Auto Five is, is is superior. Not for its story, like because its story is you know, the dialogue's good, but the story isn't that great. But if you ha- if it was your decision, you could give the award to a game. What would you give it to? I I have to give it to GTA Five because I think it's I I think it's a, a a better game, but I don't think it's a better story. I couldn't give it to The Last of Us because it's, um, it's unfathomably derivative. I, I couldn't. Um, the, oh, actually, especially the, other, the story. The what other thing mean? I would. It, the the story is not, there's no originality at all. Unfortunately, it's a good game. Um, the mechanics. But uh, Last of Us beats on mechanics. There's more glitches in GTA V. Um, uh, AI is better in GTA V than, than The Last of Us. Although it, it, I think, although no, they're quite equal. Um, voice acting is very even in both of them. Yeah. Um, in terms of playability, Last of Us has none. Yeah, you cannot play that game you can't again. Really. Play it again, but that, that's what can... happens with linear games. Again, we come across this thing where there's so many different subcategories of game that it's impossible to compare them. That's why, yeah, that's the thing. Like, I mean, it's going to be hard to vote game. But then again, there is sections for all of these games. Like, I'm sure, I'm sure that uh, Last of Us will win best. That's like, true. Story. Or, like be- best uh, linear game or whatever, and uh, Grand Theft Auto V will win. You know, best. Uh, are, like free Unfor- roaming yeah, unfortunately, sandbox. Unfortunately, I think that more people want what GTA Five provides, which is a creative environment, where a creative and destructive environment where they can break the law and kill people. Well, I mean, it's a massive stress release for me to just, just literally, with the press of a button, begin yeah. to shoot and kick old women and and be generally just sort of and, hyper yeah, and At the end of the day, that is going to... Because that is the fundamental reason people play games. It just gets rid of all the hassle of doing it in real life. Yeah, that, that, exactly. That, like, and and I think the other big thing that a lot of people forget uh, is that with a hundred and fifty million dollars and like th- like and like almost like you know limitless amount of time and and resources, you can build GTA Five and you can build at what basically a next gen console game on the the previous gen and, and what will go down in history is a big landmark in gaming but you know maybe other games don't have that maybe the last or maybe like any other game with that that sort of that, that backing of like rockstar studios could do the same 
So I guess that's another thing you kind of have to take into account. Yeah, I think that's a pretty uh, good note to end on, in my opinion. It's yeah. a nice finishing yeah. note. My vote's going to go to Last of Us, but only because I haven't really played GTA yet. I haven't had a chance. I haven't bought it for my Xbox. Because I don't really play my Xbox. I'm sure I will play it at some point, and then I'll be able to make a more informed decision. But until then, it's going to Last of Us. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed, please leave a like down below. If you have anything you want us to talk about, leave a comment down below. And if you have any suggestions or tips or... Mm, I don't know. Arguments... Yeah, Barry, Mike, your mic is ruining the outro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you have any criticism, uh, criticisms of Darren's Mike, Mike, they're very welcome down below. We agree with them wholeheartedly. And just send me money, I can buy a new one. <laughs> Thank you Please, very much. For the love of God, my family's going under. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for watching, everyone. See you next time. Please.